Welcome, friends. You are listening to the Mind Body Alchemy podcast. I'm your host, Stephanie Miramontes. This is where intuition meets education in the realms of spirituality, fitness, mindset, and more, all to create lasting change. Hey, y'all. What's up? Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we're going to talk about being in right relationship with food. This is one of those topics that we don't really get into. People say things like, you need to heal your relationship with food or fix your relationship with food, but nobody really looks at it like it's a real relationship. And we don't have these things explained to us in a way that is actually tangible, in a way that gives us the steps that we need in order to make a change, in order to make a difference in our lives. Most of us know that our relationship to food is messy, but the majority also know that we have no idea how to fix it or what the hell that even means. So I'm gonna break some things down for you today and I hope some of it sticks. I hope it resonates and I would love to hear back from you on what sticks and what resonates. If you have ever found yourself struggling to reach your goals, struggling in your relationship to food and uttering the words, I just love food too much, this is definitely the podcast episode for you. This has been used as a reason why people can't see success countless times. I can't tell you how many times I've heard it. I've even said it myself. But the truth is, if we love food, then food is not the problem at all. I want you to think about for just a moment what it feels like to be in love. What it feels like to be in a relationship with someone or something that you love. It might be easier for you to think of something simple like an inanimate object, maybe a sofa or a family heirloom. Or you can go a little bit deeper, which seems to be a little bit more impactful, like a child, a parent, or someone you're in an intimate relationship with, a spouse or a partner. When you're in a relationship of any kind, you expect that it'll be a two-way street. That means you give something and you get something. That doesn't mean it's always 50-50, right? That's not how relationships work. It's not reasonable to expect that everything will be perfectly in balance 100% of the time. But when things start to become imbalanced for a long time, that relationship starts to break down. It stops feeling good. It becomes a chore and the pleasure starts to disappear from it. You forget about the things that you love about that thing or that person or that relationship because the burden of the work is just too high. When you think about your relationship to food, who is doing the majority of the heavy lifting in this relationship? Is it you or is it the food? Are you relying on food to give you relief from the stress that you have at work with your family, with your financial circumstances, just in life in general? Is food providing you comfort when your emotions haven't been attended to or when you're avoiding something that's uncomfortable or something that you just don't wanna deal with, otherwise known as procrastinating and emotional eating? Is your food being relied on to meet your needs outside of nourishment, energy, and pleasure? At mealtimes, meaning are you actually enjoying your food during your meals? Are you eating in between meals? Are you eating mindlessly? Or are you meeting your needs for those things with intention? Of course, I am not here to tell you that you shouldn't enjoy your food. Quite the opposite, actually. I'm also not here to tell you that you should strive for or live in a certain size body. I'm a full believer in body autonomy. I don't think that you need to fit into 
societal standards or go for a certain look. I want you to be happy with where you are. So what I'm suggesting here is that if you are carrying more weight or more body fat than is comfortable and right for you as an individual, not based on what society tells you you should look like, but for you, are you comfortable? Are you happy? Are you where you want to be? Because if you are not, then your relationship with food is probably out of balance. When you love something or someone, the exchange is time, attention, and intention. That is how we nourish a relationship. It doesn't mean that it will be balanced every day or all the time, but rather we're aiming for being in right relationship with food. Being in right relationship, meaning it mostly feels good. Yeah, it takes work, but mostly This relationship feels good. Mostly, you're walking away feeling like you are in balance, that you're feeding yourself well, you're getting the things that you need from food, like we said just a minute ago, energy, nourishment, pleasure. You're meeting your needs the way that they're meant to be met. Dieters who claim to love food too much tend to eat quickly, they chew less, distract themselves with maybe their television or their cell phone. Generally, just completely check out from the experience of eating altogether. That doesn't feel like love. Not to me. And I don't think it does to you either. They bypass the signals that their bodies give them that tell them when they've had too much or not enough. For example, if you ignore your hunger long enough, it's going to become ravenous and extremely uncomfortable. It's going to become very difficult to continue to ignore that. When you eat too much, there are signals. You start to get digestive issues. Your stomach stretches out. You start to feel heavy and the food actually starts tasting less palatable. But when you are a dieter who quote unquote loves food too much, you're often eating so fast and distracted that those signals don't even have time to work at all. Because you're so checked out, you rush through the meal and before you have even had time to recognize what your body is feeling and experiencing and going through, You're on to the very next thing that you have to do on your to-do list. We're so bogged down with things to do that we don't take the time that we need to really enjoy and give attention to our meals and our self-care in general, if we're being honest. I mean, speaking of honesty, let's be honest here. If you love chocolate, Would you be taking another bite before you finish the one that was in your mouth? Are you even really tasting it if you are shoving it in faster than you can chew it? What does it smell like? How does it feel in your mouth? How many bites does it take for the flavor to change and not taste as good anymore? Did you even know that that happens? That your body has This built-in system that tells you that you have met a threshold of pleasure for the food that you're eating and then it starts to become less and less palatable with each continued bite, it happens. But you don't experience that unless you are paying attention. The body whispers in subtle cues to ensure that when you've taken too much, When you've caused discomfort, you know it. If you don't tune into those cues and honor them, that's when the body starts shouting. And we just talked about how that does that. That's when you manifest things like discomfort, digestive issues, that stretched out stomach after a meal where you have to unbutton your pants and you take big, deep breaths. It's when you want to lay down and kick your feet up instead of going for a walk 
and it's when you gain. That's when you put more body fat on. And that is not a bad thing. Rather, that is your body's way of saying, hey, I need you to look at this here. I'm not happy. Something needs your attention and I'm asking you for it. Now imagine applying the same idea to any of your other relationships. Anything else that you value. Would you ignore the fact that you're causing harm over and over? Would you stubbornly stick to the same behaviors that are detrimental to the relationship? And if you did and the relationship fell apart, would you be surprised? Would you then say, well, I just loved them too much, so I drained them of all their gifts? Of course not. You wouldn't want them to run out of resources and overconsume them. You would want to make sure that they felt love and care from you so that there was always that resource, that reservoir of energy for you to tap into that feeling of love and care that comes back to you when you give. Being in a relationship is a two-way street. Your food is here to provide you pleasure, nourishment, safety, and energy. These are incredible gifts. It's one of the best parts of the human experience. In order to honor that, it requires our time, attention, and intention. What are you intending when you sit down for a meal? What are you intending when you put food in your mouth? Is it to nourish your body? Is it to get pleasure from the food? And if so, are you actually getting the pleasure by paying attention? Or are you intending to distract yourself from something else that actually needs your attention in that moment? When we're fully committed to a loving relationship with food, we don't mindlessly consume it or take too much too often. And just like any other loving relationship, we don't punish ourselves when we mess up. We don't drag ourselves through the mud That doesn't help anyone. Instead, acknowledge where you cause the harm. Acknowledge that what you are doing is not working for you. It doesn't feel good in this relationship. And just make a commitment to be more mindful the next time. This isn't about compensation. This isn't about earning it back or, you know, having to starve yourself at the next meal for overcompensating at one meal or doing extra exercise. That's not being in right relationship either. Instead, it's just saying, you know what? I'm going to do better next time and making that effort to stay conscious and do it. Be present in that moment. Perfection is not required. It's not attainable. And that just sets you up to quit and become frustrated. But just because perfection is not required doesn't mean that work is not required. Just like every other relationship, work is required. You have to be committed daily, not just when it feels good, not just when you're having a good day, but the work required happens every day. So the next time you ask yourself, why do I love food so much? I want to challenge you to follow up with a better question. And that question is, how can I love food more? You know, food is not our enemy. In spite of what diet culture wants to tell you, sugar is not the devil. Carbs are not bad. Vegetables and protein don't make you morally superior. Does it matter if you eat nutritious food? Of course. What you consume absolutely matters. But how you consume matters so much more. I just want you to take a moment to really think on that. Think about how you want your relationship to food to actually look. How are you in relationship with food and with your body? How does it feel to eat a meal? Are you giving it attention? Are you paying attention? Are you present and there? Or are you numbing out, avoiding the voice in your head, avoiding food in general? Is food an inconvenience for you. So you're just shoving it down and moving on to the next thing because you're so busy and so stressed out that you don't have time to pay attention and enjoy it. And if so, what are some things that you can do right away to start to untangle that and begin to heal that relationship, to begin to make amends with your body and the systems that you've been gifted with in order to make sure that you are eating just enough, not over consuming, 
not taking too much, and also not depriving yourself of the pleasure and the nourishment and the enjoyment that food brings of having that human experience that we've all been blessed with. Food has flavor for a reason. It has color and texture for a reason. We enjoy it and it should be enjoyed, but it should be eyes wide open. We should be paying attention and enjoying it mindfully. We should be there just like we would be with any other relationship that adds value to us and that we wanna bring value to. So that's my challenge for you right now. I would love to hear from you. What did you take out of this episode? What steps are you gonna start taking to fix your relationship to food and get right with your relationship? And how can I support you in that? As always, if you like this episode, please make sure that you subscribe and write a review. That helps me so much. Make sure that my podcast gets on more ears and helps more people. And if you use social media, which almost everybody does, make sure you screenshot this, put it in your stories or on your page and tag me so I can come and celebrate you too and show you some love and support. That's it for me today. Thanks so much for listening. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.